Welcome back, everyone, to episode six of Kraken of the Week. And this week we have a great game and a potential first for the community. We get to see a Kraken in a carrier. This week we are featuring evil Dr. Fossatron, also uh, running from Kraken TV. Uh, this is a phenomenal game. We get to see some great carrier play and, uh, and how it really can just be a dominating performance. We got a game of domination on Trident. Here you can see spawned just south of the sea cap. Our team has already captured sea cap and we are going for the Akatsuki. There we went for a dive bomber run. Unlucky, we got the incapacitation, no damage. Uh, this is something that happens sometimes with these HE bombs. You'll just knock out their engine, knock out a gun or their torpedoes, but record no damage. Swing back around. Akatsuki doesn't have great AA, so with the ships are in danger. Get the hit and the kill for kill number one. That is, uh, that's actually a high skill shot right there. Hitting a DD on the move is definitely one of the harder things to do with the dive bombers. Looking throughout, that is the first ship to go down and the enemy team's only destroyer. And that's huge right there. Getting rid of the destroyer. Uh, while they're not the primary spotters anymore with carriers in the game, they definitely are very dangerous not only to our battleships and cruisers but to our friendly carriers getting rid of the destroyer absolutely means that the friendly carrier will have a lot more space and viewing angles of any ships that approach them there we see the autopilot pop up go ahead and start moving the carrier more towards centralized position you want to cut down those flight times to the enemy ships as you can see the enemy has almost completely abandoned the eastern flank um, and they're nowhere really close to the caps except for A. B is pretty well open. So this means at this point, no destroyers to spot. Evil Dr. Fasataran is free to just go out and start dealing damage to these ships. Battleships are easy targets for these torpedo bombers. Absolutely uh, just the easiest thing to hit. Three hits there out of three shots. One flooding. Probably cut this little comeback a little short here. If he would have gone back a little bit further, he could have extended his run and really narrowed that launch angle. Even so, going to land one of those torpedoes there. And getting four torpedoes out of that uh, squadron is going to be a absolute win every time. Next set of planes is up in the air now. Switching over to dive bombers once again. It is important if you're driving these carriers, you need to switch back and forth between the dive bombers and torpedo bombers. That way you allow the ship enough time to respawn the fighters. If you are just uh, lean only on one way, you'll deplete your fighters a lot quicker for that type and then force to go with just dive bombers. By making sure you're switching back and forth, you will always have the ability to go with either or and selecting the correct fighter with for whatever enemy ship you're going up against. So here got a really good lineup going right here on the battleship this is the same Sharn horse that we were able to put four torpedoes in last run Sharn horse making sure to line up the bomber lengthwise on the ship three good looking bombs three hits a fire and an incapacitation uh, unfortunately with the dive bombers you got to spend a lot more time in the core AA areas but those three hits and the fire were enough to knock out the Sharn Horse for number two. And go ahead, head back to the carrier and get the next squadron up in the air. Looking at the roster, we see that the Lexington, Massachusetts, and Achikov are all in a div. That is a crazy strong div. Um, so it's going to be a priority to at least knock one or two of them off to kind of weaken the communication between the enemy team. But as you can see, almost the entire enemy team is in the northwestern quadrant of the map. And they're really just putting themselves in a terrible, terrible spot here. So looking at the Gneiss now here, making sure to swing a little bit wider. That way you get a longer run in on these torpedoes here. Really narrow that uh, launch angle. Nice now is a decently fast ship, so you have to make sure to aim decently far in front of it or right at the nose, which 
Bossatron does a great job of doing. Gets the torpedoes off, lands two of them, and gets kill number three. Two battleships and a destroyer down so far, and this is looking to be a dominant game. And just a phenomenal carrier play overall. Here you can see it launches up some dive bombers and then immediately sends them back realizing that uh, they're probably not going to be best going up against an American BB switches back to the destroyer or rather to the torpedo bombers uh, that doesn't hurt the respawn rate if you can see already in the bottom right he's back up to 15 out of 15 on the dive bombers so without you know as long as they don't get shot down they're going to immediately return to the carrier and be there to use the next time around so now going for the next easiest target, that's going to be the Massachusetts. Unfortunately, the American battleships at Tier 7 have some phenomenal AA defense. Um, honestly, it, it feels like they're probably going to need buffed eventually. Massachusetts does a great job realizing what's going on here. Turns into the torpedoes. See, we did hit one there, but the torpedo hadn't been in the water long enough to arm, so it does no damage. In the meantime, they take to turn around and get back on target. We lose two additional torpedo bombers, and uh, overall, that's just a great play by the Massachusetts, realizing that he had bombers incoming and that he needed to move around and then use the AA to get rid of the bombers. Fortunately, our team steps up, takes out the Massachusetts. In the meantime, we got another squadron of torpedo bombers up in the air, and now we got a Bismarck sitting right in our sights. Now Bismarck definitely does not have the same type of anti-aircraft defense that the Americans do and so it's going to be a lot easier to get two runs out on this ship. See here making sure to swing wide because you want to attack the battleships completely perpendicular from their travel path. So a really good job taking the time don't just make a straight beeline for the ship make sure you get your angles correct. Line it up Lit in that torp angle, just narrowed down as much as possible. Um, really good job being patient there with the torpedo drop. Bismarck does do a good job of realizing they're coming in, but unfortunately realizes it a little too late. Eats three of the torpedoes and catches some flooding. And right now he's in trouble. Get around for a second run. Again, probably needed to come back just a little bit further to get a little bit more of a running start at that to narrow down the torp angle. Go ahead, drop the bombs. Unfortunately, they're not going to hit anywhere, but go ahead, get back to the carrier and get another squadron up. Looking at the game now, what looked to be a dominant win kind of narrows here. Friendly team has lost all their battleships. We have three cruisers and a destroyer left. Enemy team has a cruiser and a battleship left. The cruiser being the Achikov, um, honestly, that is, I think, potentially overpowered at this point. One of the harder ships to kill. Right there, we lose our Suzuya. And things are starting to look a little dicey. Fortunately, we do have the cap lead. Since uh, the enemy team never did get a capture point, they are severely behind on points. But as the Bismarck kept pushing north, he didn't realize he's going to continue to attract planes and get his carrier spotted. Carrier gets spotted at the very north end of the map. Honestly, that's a, that's a tactical area on the carrier driver's part. Uh, you have no business being at the edge of the map. You need to at least be in an intermediate space, uh, being a little bit closer to the action. You need to cut down the travel time. There... We do get two more bomb hits on the Bismarck. Unfortunately, no flooding or no fires. Now we take a look at the Achikov. I was saying earlier, it's one of the hardest ships to kill. You'll see, it looks like it must be using a heal right now. Because you see that little white dot. It's on fire and it just keeps healing. Nothing's happening. Uh, our friendly ship shooting at him. Doesn't seem like much is happening at all. So we're going to go ahead and get a torp run on him tried to take him off the map again getting this ship off the map with 11.7 kilometer radar it's gonna be huge fortunately torpedoes have a solid spread we get them and that's kill number four and up to 77,000 damage with the carrier now now this leaves just the Bismarck and the Lexington 
Uh, at this point, the game is sealed. Um, it's almost impossible to lose unless they are able to just kill all our ships. Um, fortunately, we know that the Bismarck was pushing to the north, so he is not a real threat to our friendly carrier. Um, as long as we keep that distance between the Bismarck and the friendly carrier, um, we shouldn't have too much to worry about. The AA on the friendly carrier is enough that it can handle the enemy carrier sending planes at it. So that's not too much of a threat, um, but still something to be mindful of. Here we get a good run of Torps going on the Bismarck. Um, again, starting that run about three and a half kilometers away from the ship. Great narrow launch angles. Get all three in the water and we're going to see what we can do here. Get one, two, flooding and incapacitation. And that is the Kraken. 88,000. And at this point, all our team has to do is chase down the carrier to get the win. Overall, I think this was a phenomenal job. A carrier's job is out there to do the spotting, finish off ships, and just continually do damage and spot the enemy team. I'm interested to see what Wargaming does in the future. I'm hoping they'll eventually add a 10th slot to these carrier games. That way we can have balance at the three capture points for domination games. But overall, this has been a fantastic example of how to properly drive a carrier. If you guys have a moment, go check out Kraken TV's YouTube channel. Have great videos showing how it's done and how to get multiple kills in games. If this is your first time coming to this channel, please consider hitting subscribe. Every week we'll have a new Kraken of the Week, as well as other World of Warship Legends videos. Again, thanks for watching you all, and have a great day.